everyone, I'm so excited to share with you the newest part of my vegan experiment and that is of course the Ocean Pancake Podcast. So here on YouTube I'm going to be sharing some of my favorite parts and then you can click down below to the SoundCloud page where it's all for free and you can get the full interview with these amazing ocean loving conservationists and all of that. So today's episode is actually with my good friend Maria, you would have seen some videos of us doing collaborations on each other's channels and I think she's just absolutely incredible. She has so much knowledge about the ocean and has really opened up my eyes about what the scientific community is doing to help the whole plastic issue. So yeah, so if you want to support me, if you want to learn more about our oceans, if you want to get more involved, then the podcast is for you. So you can listen to it whenever. Um, please be, you know, um, kind. I've been very scared to release this for a very long time because, I don't know, I've just had this like mental block to do with the podcast, but I'm actually very excited about it. I have some epic music by my good friend Graham Mose featured, and yeah, I think it's going to be great, and I've, I'm looking forward to talking to a lot of different people and learning as much as I can and sharing that all with you guys. So, yeah, thank you so much for being part of this journey. Um, I'm so grateful and together we can really make a difference. So yeah, hope you enjoy this video. Make sure to click down below to check out the podcast. It's coming out tomorrow, so on the 21st of February. Um, yeah, I don't know if you can subscribe to SoundCloud. We'll figure it all out. We'll f we will figure it all out. So yeah, thank you so much. Hello and welcome back to the Ocean Pancake Podcast. Today I am here with Maria from Sea and Me, uh, which is an epic YouTube channel. She is a marine biologist who is focusing on microbial ocean biology, ocean <laughs> oceanography, <laughs> Bio mer microbial oceanography. Yes. Maybe you should introduce a little bit about what you do. <laughs> yeah. So I am. Um, I am currently fin. Uh, not fin. I am currently doing my PhD in microbial oceanography. And in very, to describe very briefly what I do, I work with the interaction between microbes such as bacteria and plastic pollution in the ocean. Oh, so right, right up my alley in terms of fighting against plastic. Exactly. Excellent. And I realized, I started researching, there was almost nothing on, uh, no literature or no research done on bacteria that could potentially degrade plastic. Mm -hmm. uh, there were some in the soil, there were some some, not many in the ocean, but it was a very, almost nothing. And I thought, wow, this would be actually something cool to study. And so that's how, like, to just uh, study the bacteria that live on plastic in the ocean, because right after, if the plastic piece is in the ocean for, like, a certain amount of time, it depends where, but it can be from, from one week to one month, it will be covered with microorganisms. They attach, so oh, wow. they live attached to the plastic because it's a biofilm, you know, like a biofilm is, for instance, what you have if you don't scrub your bathtub or, for instance, for a long time, you know, and you have like a slimy thing. Oh. This is a biofilm created by bacteria. So that's bacteria that create like an excretion and they live in this matrix, like they live in this like slimy kind of thing. And uh, they, uh, bacteria, if they are somewhere and if they have a surface, they will attach. Not all of them, not all species, just some. And there are around, there's many bacteria in the ocean. So in one milliliter uh, of surface water, it's very, a very small amount. If you look it up, <laughs> it's really, I cannot show you. I was like making the, with my fingers, so you cannot see. Uh, it's a very small amount. Um, there are one million bacteria oh, wow. per milliliter of sea, uh, sea uh, surface sea water. So if there's plastic there, there will be always species attaching. So, and then they will create this kind of glue, this mm -hmm. uh, um, kind of layer that they produce and it's a glue and then they live there. And it's a dynamic, dynamic community. There, it's constantly changing. There will be new bacteria coming and attaching to it. There will be interactions within this, mm -hmm. this uh, matrix, between, within this kind of layer. And it's a very diverse community. There's thousands of species sometimes of different bacteria and even like it, not only bacteria, but also phytoplankton, for instance, there's tons, tons. And um, we, and so this to go back to what I am doing, 
well, there is a possibility that within this kind of biofilm there are bacteria that can degrade the plastic, mm -hmm. because why not? Bacteria are known to degrade practically everything you throw at them. At least there will be always one strain or one species that is capable of doing the most incredible things. So that's when I decided, okay, maybe I, I want to look into these, this layer, this biofilm, how it's called. One of the problems with the plastic is that they have additives as well, like in terms of health. Uh, plastic, when you produce plastic during the production, um, they, you have additives that are added to the material to make them either more uh, like uh, flexible. resistant, flexible, mm -hmm. uh, to last longer. You have all these kind of things. For instance, one that's really known as BPA. Yeah. BP, and this is a very bad, is an endocrine disruptor, so it, it kind of messes your up with your hormones. It's a, it, it's a compound that if it's in your body, it can have negative effect, like it can mm -hmm. affect your horm, de, uh, deregulate and regulate your hormonal, your har hormones basically. That's why now they say BPA free. free. Exactly. So you see a bunch of stuff saying BPA free. But that's not the only additive. That's simply the one that we have we know, about. We know about. Yeah. So, but we don't know uh, a lot as well. But we know that there is a potential health risk in the plastics that we use today. I, for instance, don't use plastic Tupperwares anymore. I become a bit paranoid. I, I, I only that's a good I only idea. use glass Tupperwares because uh, you know these additives can migrate from the plastic to your food passively. So if you have an apple in a plastic bag, uh, the, if the plastic bag has uh, some additives, it can migrate just to your fruit. Also, I've heard, again, you mm -hmm. can correct me if I'm wrong, but um, I've heard that sun increases this rate of, of tran transmission, essentially. Like water bottles, mm -hmm. single-use water bottles, a lot of people will drink them and then they'll be like, oh, I'm reusing it. Uh, however, the longer you reuse it, especially if you leave it in the sun, have a greater chance of the PET or whatever mm -hmm. from the bottles to actually get into the water. Fun, yeah. More, well, funny thing is, um, I we did develop had this. Um, it this is already published. Uh, it was a study uh, I developed with a colleague of mine. Mm -hmm. uh, she was a postdoc in our lab two years ago, and uh, this um, and we saw that actually we put plastic in seawater yeah. uh, and. We, under light and dark condition, mm -hmm. and we saw that there was something leaching from the plastic into the seawater in both conditions. So mm -hmm. uh, both when exposed to light and when not exposed to light. But the funny thing is, it's the biggest, the moment, the, the biggest release is the moment the water touched the plastic. So in the beginning. So the moment oh. you put the plastic... So even when you are drinking water from a bottle, if there is something there, it's already in the water. So I also try to avoid plastic bottles. <laughs> so the, the excellent. So the the <laughs> yeah. So the w we saw that. I mean, it might not be true for all types of plastic, but for the ones we tested, um, we you you can uh, we saw that right after you add the plastic in the seawater, it, there's all, immediately something leaching out, and that's when it's leaching more out. It, and is this like the plastics they use for like water bottles and stuff as well? Uh, like this the, was polyethylene. It's the most used uh, plastic for everything. Even that, like reusable water bottles. So normally reusable water bottles are PET. PET. Yeah, we did not test PET. Uh, PET is polyethylene tetraphthalate. Uh, and the thing is there are many different types of plastic and different types of plastic have different additives and have potential potentially very different effects in the ocean as well. And uh, in, in bacteria, they apparently uh, um, have effect on, different effect on also, this is what I'm mostly studying, is the difference between plastic types, mm -hmm. how different bacteria are on different plastic types, and we saw that there is a difference. And probably there's not one bacteria that can degrade all plastics, because they all have yeah. different molecular structures. Maybe you have... That would make sense. Yes. So, there's a lot to consider in, in this uh, <laughs> in the <laughs> topic. Definitely. Um, well. <laughs>